Many thanks for joining us on the show. Today, this is Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa, and it is the 1st of January 2021. And I'm saying Happy New Year. And of course, from me and of course, the rest of us right here at Plus TV Africa, we're saying a Happy New Year to each and every one of you out there. And I've got Wally Scott right here, and uh, we're good to go and uh, ready for the show. Happy New Year once again. It's the 1st of January, and we're saying also, thank God it's Friday. I think um, what <laughs> everybody should be doing today. Mm. And um, for the rest of the year, should be 2020. Just come and be going. Go, don't go. buy what, what don't gone, you know. We don't and, remember um, anything. It's sad that um, we've lost friends, we've lost brothers, we've yeah. lost people that are close to us. And 2020 has just been the year, mm. you know. And um, we're happy we're still here. Mm. Very yeah. true. And we're right here to give you the very best of sports on Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa. Do you believe in New Year resolutions? No. Um, I don't believe in birthdays. I don't believe in um, New Year. I don't believe in Easter. You know, I believe that um, when you, you pick the New Year as a time to actually thank God, why can't you thank God every day? Every other, yeah. um, why do you pick Valentine's Day and stay with your wife or your fiancé or your girlfriend? Why can't you love her every day? Mm. Why can't you take her out every day if you can? You know, so I don't believe in picking a day to do things I should do like every day. Yeah. Really. Mm. So it's a new year. You want to get, I understand it's a new year. The calendar says so. But if you want to actually make new year resolutions, why not make positive resolutions every day? Mm. Why pick a day to do that? Nice. I, I have, I don't I believe have in this that. friend of mine who made a resolution in the, at the start of 2020 and said, this is my year of settlement, this is my year. What happened in 2020? And uh, he said this is my year, he, well he said his year of settling It was COVID-stricken, it was yeah. um, NSAR-stricken. Yeah. So I, make it I, 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 last night, I now sent him a message, he said, the guy, how far, are you married now? He said, you did Chris. And I'm wondering, why? Why would you tell me? Because it was, it was COVID-stricken. A hey, lot of people got married. 2020 was COVID-stricken. 2020 was um, NSAR-stricken. Mm. And yeah, some people would still go all lots to make things happen, but... Mm. Some will just be like, let me do it when everything is conducive and we'll have fun. Mm. Well, it's a new year, but it doesn't mean that coronavirus left with 2020 is still out there. You still need to stay still safe, there, wear yeah. a face mask, practice social distancing, wash your hands regularly, and of course, use hand sanitizer. Well, uh, let's take a look at what happened in the year 2020, talking about the retrospect in the world of sports. Let's see that report, and uh, we'll be right back. The year 2020. A year filled with its fair share of world-shifting events and most people would want to forget in a hurry. It has been most challenging for the entire world, including our world of sports. 2020 took away sporting greats, some from coronavirus, while others due to natural causes. Kobe Bryant, Michael Lejo, Diego Armando Maradona, Paolo Rossi, Gerard Houllier, Papa Buba Diop. May their gentle souls continue to rest in peace. The novel coronavirus played a huge role as it caused a major shutdown on all sporting activity across the world, which gradually returned without fans. Uh, one of the highlights of 2020 was football returning in the face of the ravaging coronavirus. Football was, on, was sent on break, on a first break, for about three months, but global football bodies went into the drawing board and came up with a system that saw that it could play football, making sure that the virus, you know, did not spread. Unfortunately, in England, we've seen cases of coronavirus coming up, but Germany has been a major example. The Bundesliga started, led the way for the return of football and has kept to its promise of managing football without the risk of spreading the coronavirus. In Nigeria, the Lagos Marathon successfully held in February and the 42-kilometer race commenced from the National Stadium, Surulere, Lagos, and ended at Eco Atlantic. The race ended with Kenyan Olympian David Bamasai winning with a course record of 2 hours, 10 minutes and 23 seconds. Another Kenyan, Sharon Cherop, 
was the first female to touch the finish line. In the world of Formula 1, Lewis Hamilton passed Michael Schumacher on the all-time wins list. The 35-year-old Mercedes driver sealed the seventh driver's title at the Turkish Grand Prix in November, equaling Michael Schumacher's championships record. The Britain has been knighted in the Queen's New Year Honours list. In football, Ajax Amsterdam midfielder Abdelak Nouri recovers from a coma after two years, eight months and 19 days. Nigeria's Victor Siemens transfer from Lille to Napoli went into the record books as he became the most expensive African player in a deal worth almost 80 million euros. Victor Siemens' move to Napoli also has to be one of the high points of 2020, especially for Nigerian football fans. The young boy born in Olusho soon became the most expensive African footballer in history moving from Lille Football Club in France to Napoli in Italy. That is one of the high points of 2020 for me, and we hope that Victor Simen will live up to its ex to expectations in Italy and begin to bang in goals. In the English Premier League, Liverpool ended their 30-year wait for a top-flight title after being crowned Premier League champions following Manchester City's 2-1 loss at Chelsea. In basketball, the Los Angeles Lakers made history in Game 6, winning the franchise's 17th NBA title, tying the Boston Celtics for the NBA record as the Lakers went on to win 106-93 to points and became the 2020 NBA champions. And Milwaukee Bucks star Giannis Antetokounmpo signed a contract extension worth a reported $228.2 million deal, which is the richest in NBA history. The two-time most valuable player agreed a five-year deal and his agent confirmed the details of the contract with the total value beating the mark set by Houston Rockets guard James Harden in 2017. In tennis, men's tennis was guaranteed a new Grand Slam champion crowned for the first time since Marin Celic's surprise victory at the 2014 US Open and the first major winner born outside the 1980s. Naomi Osaka won her third Grand Slam title at Flushing Meadows with a brilliant comeback victory over Victoria Azarenka, but her success will be remembered as much for her impact off the court as on it. The 22-year-old used the platform to draw attention to racial injustice, wearing a different face mask for each match bearing the name of a black victim of violence. And in the Nigerian Professional Football League, it hit a mega deal with Red Strike Media and football matches can now be watched on the go on our mobile phones. Indeed, 2020 was a year of mixed emotions and we look forward to a more successful 2021. Udoka. Well, 2020 is gone and we're looking forward to a greater and more successful 2021 in all aspects of the world, from sports to entertainment to business to politics to everything, uh, not just sports now. We look forward to a great 2021 and we believe that the year will be favorable for each and every one of us. And uh, coming back home to Nigeria, a lot didn't happen for sports in as much as we saw other countries trying to get their acts together from football to boxing to all corners of sports. But Nigeria, it felt like we were just on the drawing board until the latter part of the year. Yeah, the COVID-19 thing um, put everybody on the front burner. Eh? Mm. And then we just didn't, um, we just didn't um, um, get our acts together. Mm. But we eventually we did. Our league has resumed, football, yeah. basketball has resumed, and um, yeah, to a large extent, um, yes, things actually slowed down, mm. or sometimes, let's just say the word stopped. Yeah. But now it's back, and um, we're getting better, but um, we're optimistic of a better year. Mm. Um, COVID was able to actually teach us many lessons mm. in every sphere, not only in sports, so in health, mm -hmm. in um, entertainment, lessons learned. Yeah. And, um, it's going to be a better year. It's going to be a better you and me. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a better us eventually. And um, I, I hate to say this, but I'm happy COVID came mm. because um, it's going to it's going to bring out a better year, a mm. better us, a better society, um, a fresher workplace. You know, people now realize that ah, okay, we don't even need a hundred people to actually work. So I can work from have, home. If we have fifty and the rest work from home, it's all right. So I think it's going to be a better society. Mm. After COVID, mm. post COVID, but you know, you know, coronavirus didn't stop the Super Eagles from performing well. We, we the Super Eagles had a horrible 
2020, no win in the year 2020? Well, um, like I said earlier, mm. um, fella would say, if the teacher doesn't correct you, mm. you don't get better. Mm. And so if we don't make mistakes, we don't actually correct those mistakes. Mm. So basically, um, I think it's about, um, the Super Eagles have learned their lessons. Mm. People are now beginning to criticize Gennot Raw and, and his um, package yeah. and all that. So I think um, we are only going to get better. Mm. I'm, I'm a big fan of making mistakes and correcting them. Correcting. And so um, um, if all of this COVID thing is going to actually show us what our mistakes are, then we'll correct them. Mm -hmm. We are only going to be a better society yeah. with COVID, really. Mm. And, and surprisingly, I'm saying COVID is a... Is a pandemic, mm -hmm. but there are a lot of positivity in COVID, though, really. Mm, exactly. A lot of it, really. Exactly. Well, uh, we had Kunle Sholaja, the editor-in-chief uh, for Sports Village Square, speak on Nigeria sports and how it went in the year 2020. If we have that ready, I'm sure um, the director will let me know uh, if it's ready or not, so we can actually let you hear what Kunle Sholaja had to say concerning that one. But let's move over to Arsenal and let you know that the defender, Siad Kolasinac, is joining Schalke 04 on loan for the rest of the season after the Gunners boss, Mikel Arteta, said offloading players was the January transfer window priority. Now, the, the left-back, Kolasinac, who is 27, began his career with the German side, uh, Schalke, before moving to Arsenal in 2017. So, um, Kolasinac has gone back home to Germany to play football for Schalke over in as much as he is not from that part of the I world. I clearly would have said that um, Kolasinac would not survive. Mm. The German, but he's played there before. The German football team are called the Diemann Sharks, mm. the German machines. And um, I would have said Kolasinac, being a Bosnian, would not survive in the Bundesliga. Mm. But he's been there before. Yeah. You know, so I don't know how well it will do, but he couldn't do well in Arsenal. I, and I, like I've always said, Arsenal is a lazy team. <laughs> Every player who has left, left Arsenal and goes to that, I always say that this training experience here is too much for Arsenal mm -hmm. because obviously their training experience in Arsenal is less stressful, stressful. than other clubs. So Kolasinac has gone to Arsenal. He has become, I'm sure he's become lazy. And um, I want to believe that he just might be a lazy person when he gets to the Bundesliga. However, he will eventually do well when he gets to um, Schalke 04 because um, we expect that um, the Bundesliga is a more, with time, he will get um, his act back together physically, that is. You know. mm -hmm. Okay, um, wishing Kolasin at well in that one as he moves over to Schalke 04 on loan. And uh, Mikel Ateta said he's going to offload a lot more players in uh, the team and we hear the likes of of course we know that Herrera is currently at um, Atletico Madrid uh, playing uh, football over there and uh, a lot more players will get to leave us now but fingers are pointing uh, towards Ozil that he just might be shown the exit door as well and uh, Teta is planning on bringing some quality into the Arsenal team. Now going over to Manchester United, uh, striker Edison Cavani has been suspended for three games and uh, of course uh, fined £100,000, approximately $136,590 after he admitted a football association charge for using a racial term uh, which is uh, uh, the one he put up on social media. But the 33-year-old Uruguayan used the word Negrito in, uh, in an Instagram post last month after beating Southampton on the 29th of November before taking it down and apologizing. Now, Cavani will miss United's league game against Aston Villa, the League Cup semi-final against Manchester City, and the FA Cup match against Watford as a result of the suspension. And the FA also said Cav uh, Cavani would have to complete face-to-face -face education as part of his punishment. Now, Cavani is being punished for what he put up on social media. Should I say innocently? Because he didn't know that this is wrong. I um, But when, when, they, when they corrected him, he took it down immediately. <coughs> I want to be on the safe side then. Yeah. I want to be on the fence on this one. Because um, everybody knows I'm a Man U fan. Mm. So I, I don't want to seem like I'm taking sides. Yeah. However, it's Nigeria. Let me use Nigeria for an example for you. Nigeria, we greet each other with insults these days. Mm -hmm. I can't call the words. Yeah, we of use. course. <coughs> and then we start you throw using it, words yeah. that are strong, insulted. Mm -hmm. You know, and he says he has different black friends 
in his country, in Uruguay. <coughs> and he plays with them and calls them Negrito. Yeah. So he didn't see it as anything wrong. And the same way we use insultive words to greet ourselves in Nigeria here, mm. we, we, we do it abroad, in America or in England. And if you go to Peckham in London, they use these words that I'm talking about. Mm. Ah, I'll pass more here now. And they start using those words. And they are insulting words. And then somebody gets angry about it and put, go to the court. But he says in Uruguay, where he's from, he, use, he uses Negrito mm. for his friends there. And um, it's not an insult to him. It's like a nickname. Yeah. They actually call him other names too. And when they told him, he took it off the Instagram page, but he still feel, he felt he needs to get punished. Yeah. And he's punished. Mm. It's good. I think... Um, and when you live in Rome, you behave like Romans. Exactly. So Hina is in the UK. He's not in Uruguay. And um, he's done something wrong in the UK that could be looked off in Uruguay. And he's learning his lesson. It's good. Yeah, Hina and I, I, I believe the reason why the FA went ahead to punish him is because if he goes unpunished, every other person will come out and say, but Cavani did this and, and he was punished. I agree with you. So I he has apologized. He knows that he has done something wrong. Yeah. He took it down. No, he says, I did something wrong in the UK. Yeah. But he says in Uruguay, it wouldn't work like that. Mm -hmm. But however, he's in the UK. Yeah. He has to follow the rules in the yeah. UK. He didn't know those were the rules and he's getting punished for it. But the good thing is he has shown remorse. Exactly. Which is fine. But yeah, That's missing fine. those games for Manchester United uh, just might be very, very key for the club. But I'm sure Edith Cavani and um, the entire Manchester United team have what it takes to... Um, take charge of the other games and probably get the points that they need to move on to the next phase of uh, the tournament and, of course, the English Premier League. Well, let's talk about Burnley now. An American invest investment group has completed its takeover of the club, buying an 84% stake in the Premier League club. Now, the managing director of the club, of the group that has bought the club, Alan Pace, has replaced Mike Garlic as chairman. However, Garlic, who sold his near 50% stake in the club, and fellow former shareholder uh, John will remain at Tuffmore as uh, directors. Let's listen to that little bit of interview, and when we come back, we talk about club takeover. Alan Pace, it's been announced today that uh, you and ALK Capital have become the new owners of Burnley Football Club. This must be a very proud day for you. It is. We are very excited to begin this new journey with the Claret family. Um, this is somewhere that we have you know, looked for a very long time to get involved with. And so this is the culmination of a lot of effort on our part, and we're very excited. There's been takeover talk surrounding this football club for some time. How pleased are you to now complete this deal? Extremely excited that it's finally come to fruition. It's taken us a lot longer than we would have liked. Um, we would have loved to have been here sooner, but, you know, we're happy that this is the, you know, the right moment for us to get involved. And what is it that's attracted you to Burnley Football Club specifically? You know, it's a really good question. We've spent a lot of time looking um, at football and at football clubs. And what attracted specifically to Burnley had a lot to do with the passion of the fans, the quality of the club and the way that it had been managed, uh, the longevity of the coaching staff, and the ability for us to see a path to growth. Sean Dyche, she's obviously done a fantastic job at Burnley Football Club. How much have you admired his work from afar? Look, you know, we have been very, very big fans of Sean for some time, as I mentioned. You know, the, the longevity and stability of the management side has been something that's been very impactful from our perspective of, you know, the playing style and the, the ability to perform at the level that they have. So we're very, very big fans of Sean's. Many Burnley fans were perhaps a little bit disappointed not to see new faces come into the club during the summer transfer window, and they'll be looking for you to invest in the team in January. Is that something that you're prepared to do? You know, we're very prepared to come in and support, you know, Sean and the management, you know, team. We need time to get in and understand what their needs are, what they've been planning for, you know, what the decisions were that they've taken so far and where they're, you know, desiring to go to. But we're fully prepared to back the manager. You know, there's been a lot of talk about club takeover and the North London club, Arsenal, most of the fans are still hoping that one day someone bigger than um, Cronkey 
will come in and take I over. I think it's, it's a good thing. We, mm -hmm. we saw Glazers take mm -hmm. over in Manchester United. Manchester United. I yeah. saw the difference. Mm -hmm. We saw Paris Saint-Germain, the Sheikh al Khalid, mm -hmm. take um, over, take over and you, saw, you see what PSG has become. We saw Leicester being taken over and they surprised bookmakers and won the English Premier League. You know? So I think um, Burnley, a takeover is going to be more money for them, better players, they will try and lure more players to them. Mm. So I think takeovers have always been good for football clubs. Yeah. And I think um, I want to congratulate Burnley. Mm. I think um, they will only get better right now. Mm. Yeah, but you know, they are somewhere around the relegation zone. Don't you think it's... it's uh, With a takeover, they will try and work towards... There will be a turnaround? Remaining, no. They will try and work towards remaining in the Premiership. Mm. And then by next season, they get new players and pumping money. Well, talking about the Premiership, if they, stay. Going down, if they stay in the yeah, Premier yeah. League, yeah. Games are going down later today and, of course, uh, this weekend in the English Premier League. Everton will take on West Ham United. Manchester United will take on Aston Villa. Tottenham Hotspur against Leeds United. Crystal Palace will battle it out with Sheffield. Brighton and Nova Albion will be up against Wolverhampton Wanderers. And Arsenal takes on West Bromwich Albion away from home. And on the 3rd of January, Burnley will be at home to Fulham. Newcastle United versus Leicester City. Chelsea versus Manchester City. Southampton will take on Liverpool. Well, the Chelsea versus Manchester City, as at, for about two days now, they said it will not hold. But as of yesterday, Manchester City has been given the all clear to, to play their game here. So it's looking likely that this game, we're not sure yet, but it's likely to happen. And uh, if it happens, I see Chelsea running away with all three points. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I, I give it to them. I, mm. I think the Chelsea players are, are being underrated. Mm. They've made some few mistakes. They've dropped points in yeah. a few days. But yes, they can do it. Mm. They can do it. Against the Manchester City side, um, we know that some of the players have uh, contracted the virus, talking about uh, Kyle Walker and Gabriel Jesus, and they've been out isolated. And there are some unnamed players. Too. Unnamed players. Yeah. So I'm sure they will not put out a very strong squad against yeah. uh, Chelsea. But let's see how it goes uh, for this weekend games. And uh, we're right here to give you the updates tomorrow and on Monday for the rest of the results. Remember, other leagues have also resumed. The Spanish La Liga, the German Bundesliga, the Italia Serie A, and the French Legon. Well, that's much you can take today on Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa. I hope you enjoyed the package, our first show for the year 2021. It's been fantastic, really. And I want to wish um, you, Udoka first of my brother, Happy New Year. Mm -hmm. I want to wish you, the viewer, Happy New Year. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm optimistic it's going to be a great year for us all. Yeah. And um, the cameraman said he's going to get married this year. Tola has, has, has too many plans for... He had to call his Yeah, he had too many plans for last year. Wow. Well, we can always blame it on COVID, COVID and NSAS. Yeah. So let's hope, hopefully, it will do it this year. Okay, we look forward to... And you too. Me? Mm. No, we are... Your plans, though. I'm not yeah, talking about just your done, plans. Your we're... general plans. No, we are done... With we're the show. With the show. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the package. Remember, you can reach us on social media, Plus TV Africa on Twitter and on Instagram. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Plus TV Africa. And for those juicy stories, log on to our website, www.plustvafrica.com. I'm Udoka Njoko saying, please enjoy the rest of your day. Have a happy new year, but please stay safe out there.